me a story, Auntie Bee. One story, and then off to sleep, okay? Okay, Auntie. Did I ever tell you about the time I went to Bee Heaven? Bee Heaven? Where's that? Bee Heaven is a magical place where there are blooming trees as far as the eye can see. And inside those blooms lies so much nectar the busiest bees in the world could never get all of it. Wow. I didn't know then, but as it turns out, this marvelous bee heaven had another name. What was that? California Almond Country. Almond Country? What the heck's an almond, Auntie Bee? Now you just lay back down, close your eyes, and I'll tell you. One day, your Aunt Petunia and I stepped out of our bee box and saw an amazing sight, acre after acre of juicy blossoms, just waiting for us to take their nectar. So many, I could hardly believe it. How did you get there? Well, it turns out we were brought there on a truck in order to do a very special job called pollination. What's pollination? Pollination is the act of carrying pollen between blooming plants. You see, each spring, soft pink and white petals appear on the almond trees, which attract bees like us. The pollen from the blooms sticks to our legs and feet, and we transfer it to the other trees all over the orchard. Without blooms or bees to pollinate, there would be no almonds. Your Aunt Petunia and I were really good at it. Every day, we would have a contest to see who could visit the most blossoms. But one day, when I came back from way over on the other side of the orchard, the bee box and Aunt Petunia were gone. Oh, no, Auntie Bee, what happened? The blossoming period was over. I was so busy I hadn't noticed the petals were already falling to the ground, and all the bees but me were taken away. Weren't you scared, Auntie Bee? At first. But soon, I became more curious than scared. Because by being left behind in bee heaven, I got to see what no bee has ever seen before. What's that? The entire almond growing process from B to A. Don't you mean from A to B? <laughs> nope, I mean from B to almond. Soon after the bees left, a fuzzy green coating called a hull started to appear where each pollinated flower had been. Inside the hull was a protective covering called a shell. And inside that grew the part of the almond people eat, called the kernel. All summer long, the almonds grew and grew. Each day, I watched the almond growers make very important decisions regarding when to water, when to apply fertilizers, and how to prepare the ground in a way that was good for the trees and good for the planet. Finally, sometime between August and September, the big juicy hulls began to split and open. The more they opened, the drier they became. Until one day, the tree I was on suddenly went crazy. Oh no! The tree was shaking so hard, I thought it was an earthquake. It scared me so much, I made a beeline straight up to the clouds. When I came back down, I saw it wasn't an earthquake at all, but a big machine called a shaker. And when it attached itself to a tree, it made almonds fall to the ground like rain. What happened next, Auntie? Well, after all that shaking, the almonds just laid there, drying on the ground. After about 10 days of drying, another big machine called a sweeper came and pushed them all into a neat row. Then a pickup machine and a truck picked up the almonds and took them to a processing plant where the hulls and shells were removed until there was nothing left but the most perfect looking almond kernels you ever did see. What happened to all the hulls and shells? <laughs> that is a good question, my little honeybee. The shells were shipped off to dairy farms to make bedding for cows, and the hulls became cow food. From what I could see, not a thing went to waste. So that's where that stuff goes, but where do the almonds go, Auntie? They go all over the world, to more than 90 countries in all, even back to where they first came from. You mean they didn't always grow in California? 
Oh no, originating in Western Asia, traders carried almonds with them, finding almonds a handy food as they traveled along the Silk Road between Asia and the Mediterranean Sea. Almonds were carried to the New World by European explorers and ended up here in California's Central Valley, where warm, dry summers and cool, rainy winters are perfect conditions for almonds. Why the heck do people like almonds so much, Auntie Bee? They can't taste anything like nectar. During my year spent in the orchard, I saw almonds being enjoyed all the time. Most people just grab them and eat them. <laughs> Talk about being convenient. Apparently, almonds have a real delicate flavor and a great crunch. But most importantly, they have a bunch of nutritional value. Besides all their nutritional value, what really surprised me was the many different ways people use almonds. Sometimes they're simply left alone and eaten as whole, natural almonds. Other times, the skin is removed, which makes the almond appear white. We call this blanching. Almonds that are sliced are often used for soups, salads, and pastries. Chopped almonds are often added to cookies, brownies, or cereals. That's all wonderful, Auntie Bee. But can I ask you just one question? Sure, if it's any of your beeswax. Did you ever see Aunt Petunia again? Indeed I did. Shortly after the almonds were harvested in the fall, the trees went into what is called their dormant period. Now is the time when the almond trees settle in for the long winter by dropping all their leaves. They might look dead, but they're not. Dormancy is a time for the almond trees to store nutrients and energy for spring. When the cycle starts all over again with the bloom, then pollination, then kernel development, hull split, harvest, processing, shipping, and back to winter dormancy. But what about Aunt Petunia? Well, that next spring, when the blossoms came back, the bee boxes were brought back too, one of which held your Aunt Petunia. <laughs> Petunia and I were so happy to see each other, we immediately decided to celebrate with a snoot full of tasty nectar. <sighs> That's a sweet story, Auntie. Indeed it is, especially if you're a bee. Boy, I'd sure like to visit Bee Heaven someday. You will, honey. You will. Good night, Auntie. Good night, little Bee.